Basically, my computer sounds like me after I've run up the stairs. After I've walked up the stairs, to be honest. Hello everybody, welcome back. I wanted to share a very important anniversary to me today, and that is I have been sober for three years. I never thought I'd get to this point, to be honest, because I just thought I was taking a little break from alcohol, and I think that's quite often how sobriety stories start. You hear people saying, oh, I'm not drinking this week, I'm having a week off, and then that week turns into a month, that month turns into a year, and then you become like me and you haven't had a drink for three years. <laughs> the reason I quit alcohol is probably quite similar to why a lot of people my kind of age quit, and it's because we don't know when to stop. <laughs> I definitely don't. I would go on a night out and I would say to myself, right, I'm only gonna have a couple. I need to be home for 11 because I need to be up at five to go to work or, you know, things like that. And it would get to 11 and I'd be eight drinks in, waffling away to a stranger I don't even remember. And before I knew it, it would be 5 a.m. and I'd be stumbling home, ready to get ready for work. If I'm being honest, most of the period where I drank, I don't particularly remember, and I also don't particularly like remembering. It was a time in my life where I was even more insecure than I am now. I just felt my presence and my personality wasn't worth being around if I hadn't had a drink. I have social anxiety and I definitely, definitely used to use alcohol as a crutch because it kind of mellowed me. I mean, that's what alcohol does, doesn't it? It removes your inhibitions and it removes all of the worries that you might have. Or does it? The thing is, alcohol kind of does do that in the moment, but then in the morning, <sighs> my God. <laughs> the mornings for me after I'd had a drink were awful, awful. Anything that I would have been anxious about the night before happened the day after and I would just lie in bed like why did I do half the things that I did last night? I basically got to a point where I wasn't in a relationship I was happy in, I was friends with people I didn't really have anything in common with or know all that well. I would go out almost every day, drink very heavily, and it wasn't a good place to be. I remember um, I actually was very sick one day, and I mean, I was really unwell, and looking back, it was so unbelievably selfish of me to go out in that state, because I could have given a cold to somebody, and that breaks my heart now, but I was so unwell, and I was sat at the bar drinking a lot. And I would just slump there, and it was so embarrassing looking back. Oh, I can't even think about it now. I know that doesn't even seem that bad, but I'm really shy and awkward, and I don't particularly like talking to people at the best of times. So when I would look back and see that my drunk self had merrily introduced herself to literally everyone in the room, got numbers from everybody, took selfies and posted them on random social media accounts. Yeah, it was just the crippling anxiety that I was avoiding the night before was just projected onto the next day. And that would often last days and days and days and days and days. So in October 2020, I was like, no more, we're done, I am leaving. Alcohol, I've had it up to here with you. This is a toxic relationship. And that's what I did. Exactly like that. <laughs> oh, this video <laughs> is so chaotic. People are probably watching this like, you sure she hasn't had a drink now? Sobriety has definitely gained popularity since I became sober. We actually have a sober bar just around the corner from us which I haven't actually been to yet, but it looks amazing. More and more people are noticing the positive impact of being sober has on their life. But that doesn't mean you have to be teetotal. You don't have to make that part of your identity. Personally, I am teetotal. That is part of who I am. I do tend to tell people if we meet up, you know, I don't drink. And I think 
that was the biggest breakthrough for me. When I first stopped drinking, I would just say, I'm not drinking tonight, and people would kind of push it, but I'd still be like, nope, I'm on a week off. The biggest breakthrough for me was saying, I don't drink. Most of the time, people won't force you to drink if you just categorically say, I don't drink. It's like if someone offers you a cigarette and you don't smoke, saying I don't smoke usually means that person doesn't try and force a cigarette in your general direction. And so by saying I don't drink meant people just didn't ask any questions and didn't even try. Thankfully, I have a group of friends now that don't expect me to drink. Um, a lot of them were around when I did drink and new friends kind of don't, have never seen me drink, so they, they don't expect it. But my old friends who I would go out and have drinks with, they definitely don't expect it anymore. They're very, very um, encouraging and very lovely. In fact, the other day, say the other day, a couple of months ago, I helped my friends move. Uh, I used to go out drinking with them a lot. And they actually bought me no secco as a thank you gift for helping them move. Prosecco. But it hasn't got any pro in it. This is the most chaotic video I've ever, ever made. This mug is bigger than my head. If you're considering cutting back on alcohol, these tips really, really helped me the first couple of months. Firstly, telling everybody that you're not drinking for a little while. If you just say you're having a week off, it can still kind of tempt people, particularly if you're in a very alcohol heavy environment. It can still tempt people to go, oh, but just have one, just, just have one, you'll be fine. And if your brain is anything like my brain, one turns into two, turns into 12, turns into 15, turns into, I don't even remember who I am anymore. Tell people, particularly people you go out with semi-regularly, that you are not drinking for a month. You can even play it up a little bit and say, oh, it's such a struggle, please don't make it harder for me because I really want to get to a month. I found this so beneficial because most of the time, if you're with lovely people that you like, they are not gonna force you to drink too. Another thing I think that really helped me was to evaluate your friendships. I think if a friendship naturally comes to an end when you stop drinking, that probably means the only thing you had in common is alcohol. And is that really a great basis for a friendship? No, probably not. I answered that very quickly, but it's true. No, it's not. <laughs> I think if you have friends that don't support your decisions, then they're probably not really your friends. That isn't to say that you just cut everybody out. I think sometimes people take a little bit of time to understand your decisions, and I think that's absolutely fine. But if you've got people sort of treating you not very nicely for doing this, or if you have people trying to force you to change your mind, then they're not really great friends. Which apparently, I have some great friends that just keep pinging at me. ping a ding 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 Another thing that helped me a lot was to create new friends or encourage your existing friends to try out new things. Since moving to Brighton, I have done so many new things. None of those things involve drinking. Like, yeah, people might say afterwards, should we hop down to the pub and have a drink after this? In which case you can say yes or no, depending how you're feeling. The activity itself doesn't involve drink. So I think that is really, really helpful. This was by far the most chaotic video I've ever filmed. They're not all like this. I'm just really excited that I've got three years and I don't miss it anymore. I don't even think about it anymore. If I go to a pub, it doesn't phase me at all. I can enjoy myself. So yeah, this was basically just a self-congratulatory video to say, well done, Becca, for getting to three years. And if you're thinking about maybe starting a sober journey, please do reach out because I think having a community of sober friends is great to help you keep motivated and carry on the journey if you would like to. Thank you so much for watching this video and for putting up with my little bit of a waffle and thank you so much everybody. If you're new here, my name is Becca, nice to meet you. I create videos on all sorts of things so please subscribe and like and stick around because we're a lovely little community here. I will see you very very soon and have a good day, have a good life. I will see you in the next one. Bye. Oh my gosh. Actually, I will show you. This is a situation I've been dealing with. I had you on a chair and I was kneeling on this, like this, and it's so uncomfortable. So, 
that's me. <laughs> um, thank you so much for watching this. I know it was very silly and very possibly annoying, but I'm very proud of myself for getting here. So thank you very much. I will see you all in the next one.